Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Old School 1911s. Figure I'd give you another video. I know, man, I'm pumping these out pretty quick. Just sitting here at home, just winding down on my last few days off before I have to go back to work. And uh, figure, hey, why not do a couple videos? This one is my Walter P22. A great little gun. Uh, it's fun to shoot. It's cheap, you know, 22. Can't go wrong when you want to go play all day and cost you 20 bucks. And this is it right here. And few things that I like and about this gun and a few things that I dislike about this gun is what we're going to go through. Um, one thing, I'll go through the dislikes first, is the sight. It's a three-dot adjustable sight. The rear is adjustable, goes left and right. But as you can see, there's a lot of play between the front sight and the rear sight. That's one thing that's kind of hard and you got to get used to because when you're shooting at things, it, it gets a little difficult because of the amount of playroom that you have. Um, I don't care for double action triggers, you know, I, and I know there's a use for them, but I don't care for them. And again, this gun's been safety checked. So just like all my firearms, uh, the trigger's got a lot of play in it, but Hey, you know, I can't be picky because they, again, it's just a 22 and you know, they're not made to be the best things out there. So yes, the trigger's got some play in it. It breaks kind of funny, you know, I, it's weird. One, some things that I do like is when the safety's on, you can see that the hammer is back a little bit, which is real nice. And I like that because now you can let the hammer down and not have to worry about, like, damaging your firing pin. Uh, that's one really nice feature that I really, really like about this 22. Another thing I like about the 22 is it's just so tactical looking. I mean, it's, it's cool that a 22 can fit a laser and a flashlight and you know it's just really cool it's threaded for silencers already i mean it's just a cool gun that you can throw a lot of accessories on and and doesn't cost you an arm and a leg to do it the grip is very comfortable real comfortable you know i don't have the largest hands but i do have pretty decent size hands and you know my magazine's got the little pinky rest on it which i normally don't use i kind of just keep it up here anyways on whatever gun i'm shooting but uh yeah, the magazine release is built into the trigger guard, which is pretty well known in Walters. It's got a magazine disconnect where you cannot pull the trigger if the magazine is out of the gun. Uh, one thing that I don't like is that I don't care for that feature, but yeah, what are you going to do? Then there's another thing that you guys got to watch out for for those of you that own this gun and don't know or... For those of you that do know, well, you know what I'm about to say is, sorry, let me see if I can do this one-handed. When the slide is locked in the rear and you just put a fresh loaded magazine in there, you do not want to do this to release the slide. You don't want to use the slide release. Just pull back on the slide and let it go forward on its own. Um, the reason being is because I've seen some people where this is a perfectly square magazine release. And at time and time after releasing it and releasing it, it'll eventually round that edge off and it'll have a hard time locking itself when the magazine's empty. And the barrel itself is a stationary barrel, so it's not like when you take the gun down, it's the barrel doesn't come out. You have to actually unscrew it. You take this lug off up here and the barrel will loosen up. So, but other than that, I mean, it's a, it's a great little 22. i I'm going to let it down the bad way just to show you guys what I'm talking about. And because I'm one-handed. And then if I have the safety on, you can pull the trigger and not have to worry about firing pin issues. So that's also nice. Now, you got to be really careful with these because they get really dirty really quick and they don't want to function properly. So I always keep a can of ballast all in a bag with me. So I just give it a quick spray in all the moving sections, you know, just so I don't have any malfunctions. But... It seems to like CCIs, just like all 22s do. Or I shouldn't say all, but majority of 22s enjoy the CCI mags. And it's a high-quality ammunition. You know, you're paying 12 13 bucks a box for these things for 50 rounds, where usually for 20 bucks you get 500 something in the bulk. Now, this thing will function with bulk ammo, but it's just really picky. Federal and American Eagle bulk boxes runs great. The Remington Golden Bullets, uh, hit or miss on those. 
anything Winchester is just terrible on this thing from from my experiences. You guys might do great with other ammo, but this particular one doesn't do very well with Winchester. And the funny thing is, is none of my firearms do very well with Winchester ammunition. Uh, my 40 caliber witness, I mean, doesn't like Winchester white box. My shotgun, my brand new SX3 that's supposed to eat anything, hates Winchester rounds. It just failure to eject on my Winchester, but all other rounds function perfectly. Any the cheap federal ammunition, all that goes through like no problems. As soon as you step into Winchester rounds, no good. Uh, one thing I did forget to show you guys when I did the Smith and Wesson 500 Magnum video is I showed you guys the round, but I didn't really show you guys a comparison, which I think is pretty cool. I used a cigarette lighter just for good measure to show you on the 500, the Smith and Wesson. Where's my finger? There, there it is. <laughs> the Smith and Wesson 500 compared to a 45, and I mean, again, this is a big bullet, you know, and it doesn't look that big anymore when you put it next to that 500. This is a 40 caliber. And this is a 22, just to show you, kind of show you guys the magnitude of the 500 Magnum. One cool thing I picked up the other day is looking at this 40. I know you guys noticed in this green tip is this. Yeah, I fell into the gimmick, the zombie ammunition. I thought it would be pretty cool. Uh, I heard they were only making a limited supply of these, so I figured I'd pick up a box. Hey, you never know that one day it might be worth something. You never know. And then one day I might just decide to shoot them. So who knows? But it's pretty cool. It gives you like little zombie 101 tips. And I know it's kind of hard to read, but I'll read it for you guys. Creepy arms. They will try to distract you by waving their arms all over. Stay focused. Bloody cloths. They've been snacking on your neighbors all day. Their table manners dis disappeared when they were infected. Dragging feet. Their movement is Painfully slow and their feet never really leave the ground. Use this to your advantage. Set some trip lines around your heart yard. Heads. This is the only part that's worth aiming for. Destroy their brain before they try to eat yours. Which, you know, it's pretty cool. I mean, I got it. So, it is, you know, I liked it. I thought it was a cool looking box. Figure I'd pick it up. Plus the fiance is into all that stuff. Like, you know, pink guns and zombie ammo. And she thinks it's cool, so... I picked it up for fun. All right, back to the 22. Okay, important thing about cleaning is uh, most people don't like to over-oil these guns. But you know what? This one here, it, it couldn't hurt to oil the hell out of it because it'll function a lot better for you when it's lubed up. And keep your uh, feed ramp oiled too because 22 rounds, you know, they have those that rough edge right here. And sometimes it's hard for this gun to get past that. Another thing is when you're racking a brand new magazine in there you want to uh it's weird because it feels like you have to help it the slide go forward which is kind of like the same problem i was experiencing with my witness but again it's because it's, the recoil spring is so weak in a 22 i mean it's it's expected so other than that tell me what you think guys